Oh, hey everyone, it's me, Bill, KC3RYS, once again coming to you live from the ham shack. Now, a lot of people I know are asking me questions about how to get... There's a call right now, I better grab that. Hello, you're on live with Bill. Hi Bill, long time first time here. I heard you mention that you are a licensed ham, and I was wondering if you could tell me how I could become a licensed operator and use my new ham radio before stuff hits the fan. That's an excellent question, and I'm sure a lot of people would like to know the answer. So, are you now just shaving your head, or are you completely bald? <laughs> Sunspots or something must have disconnected our call, but anyhow, I think we got the question. Let's get to it. Becoming a licensed amateur radio station or a ham radio operator is a lot easier today than ever before. It used to be you'd have to know Morse code and how to build a radio itself out of a coffee can, some bailing wire, a deck of cards, a lemon, and some screws. But today, you can purchase an inexpensive $25, $30 radio and get started in the hobby almost immediately. The basic requirements for becoming an amateur radio operator are, you must have a valid United States mailing address. You must have a valid taxpayer identification number, uh, such as your social security number or a tax ID number or an FCC registration number. And you must also pass the exam. Now there are four levels of the exam. There's the technician class, there's the uh, general class, and the amateur extra class. Today we're just gonna talk about the technician class because if you're here watching this video, that's probably the class you wanna get into. Technician class will give you access to UHF and VHF frequency, which are great for starting with a handheld radio or even a base station. You will have access to some frequencies outside of UHF and VHF, but it's a little bit more technical and I don't think we need to get into that today. For both the technical class and the general class licensing, the test consists of 35 questions. You need to get 26 correct or about 74%. And the estimate is it takes about 10 hours of study time to pass those tests. When you sit for your technician class license, if you pass, you will be invited to take the general class as well. Even if you haven't studied for it, it's a great idea to try it. You never know, you could get lucky. There are several online classes that you can take to help you prepare for the test. Those include Ham Test Online and HamRadioPrep.com. Both of these websites have practice tests that you can take repeatedly to find out whether or not you feel confident enough to take the final exam. There are also several useful books which will go into the theory and design and prepare you for uh, understanding radio and antenna theory and allow you to sound intelligent if you're ever at a dinner party talking to someone about your ham radio. There's a lot of great books. The one that I used was the Dummies book. It's uh, very good, goes into a certain amount of theory and, and everything else. It's probably got a lot more information in it than you need just to pass your technician's class, but it's a great start. A couple other good starts include the AARL Ham Radio License Manual 5th Edition. This is the complete study guide with a question pool. There's the Ham Radio Exam Prep, a license manual and study guide for the amateur radio general class and radio technician class with 100 test questions. There's the Ham Radio Technician License Flashcards. I actually downloaded the pool of questions and made my own flashcards to pass. The Amateur Radio Quick Study Guide Technician Class I got the dummies book because like Winnie the Pooh said, knowing yourself is the beginning of all wisdom. No matter how you choose to study, remember the question pool is 412 questions that you need to study in order to pass. The exam will take 35 randomly selected questions. You have to get 26 of those questions correct, or as I said before, 74%. And you can find the entire list of 412 questions at www.arl.org slash questions hyphen pool. When you get there, scroll down to the window and you'll see big letters, technician pool, select that and you'll download the file. Then if you like, you can use those questions to either create a flashcard index or just go through the questions one at a time and memorize. Now the cost to take the exam is $15 and that's a sitting fee. If you pass the exam, like I said, they will invite you to take the general exam at no additional cost. And I can tell you now, if you haven't studied for the exam, there ain't no way you're gonna pass, but it doesn't hurt to take it just for the experience. The cost of the FCC license is $35. Add that to your $15 sitting fee. The total cost to you is $50, unless you sign up for an online course and then whatever their charges are, that will apply as well. If you don't own any equipment yet, then just Open your wallet, close your eyes, and hold on tight. First, you'll want to get a radio. 
The first radio I got was the TYT 9800. It's a quad band radio. It's an excellent entry level radio and I have a link to it in the description below. This is an excellent entry level radio. I have an affiliate link down below. And if you do have a chance to hit some of those affiliate links, it does support the channel. Thank you. Now, before you run out to Amazon and order the radio, you need to keep in mind also, radios do not come with power supplies. You have to purchase a power supply separately. When I purchased my radio, the Alonco DM330DM came highly recommended as a power supply. I won't pretend to know anything more about it. I think you all know that I'm not a very smart person, uh, but it does work like a charm. And again, I have an affiliate link below. After that, you'll need to get an antenna. Again, an Elmer recommended to me the Diamond X50A affiliate link is below. And sorry, there is something else you need. You need a cable to connect your radio to that antenna. Since you'll likely want the antenna on the roof, you'll want to get at least 25 to 50 feet of cable. I have an affiliate link below for the RG8X cable. I think it's for 50 feet. Now, if you add up the cost of the radio, the licensing, the antenna, the cable, you're well over $500 to start, but don't despair yet, my friends. There may be an easier way. You can get yourself an inexpensive handheld radio with a comically large antenna for a very reasonable cost. The good folks at Baofeng make a variety of radios. You can get an 8-watt UV5R with a programming cable, extended antenna, external microphone, and a second extra-large capacity battery all in one package for an amazing price. Affiliate link below. Amateur radio is a fun and useful hobby that's been around for quite a long time. The barrier of entry into the hobby has never been lower. Back in the old days, you needed to know how to tap out Morse code, build radios from lemons and tin cans and playing cards, but none of that applies anymore. It's so much easier and more inviting. Today, it's just a straightforward test, lots of inexpensive equipment and expensive equipment if that's your preference. I hope that you stick with it. And if you haven't already gotten your license, I hope you study and apply and get it soon. We need more intelligent and industrious folks just like you to join the hobby. Thanks for watching and have fun.